Good morning and welcome. Thanks for tuning in to Kila Chari Torah's daily review of the Laws and Customs of Purim for Friday, March the 11th. Uh, we're coming up, by the way, on Parsha's Zachor. This Shabbos is Shabbos Zachor. Uh, we're going to read a portion from the second Sefer Torah. We're going to take out a second Sefer Torah and read from that uh, Sefer the uh, mitzvah of recalling uh, the evil that, Amalek, uh, per- that the Amalekites perpetrated on the Jewish people. Uh, that is a Torah obligation, so if you can make your way uh, in any way, shape, or form to Shul, please be here, make sure you uh, come for that this coming Shabbos morning, tomorrow morning. Uh, there, uh, so the uh, last thing we really have to talk about is the Purim Suda, the mitzvah of uh, having a festive meal, a meal of thanksgiving on Purim. There's no obligation to eat a meal on the night of Purim, but one should be happy and celebratory in the evening and maybe even eat a small meal. When you bench, when you say Birkat Tamazon, you should include the Al Hanisim paragraph that we discussed yesterday with, in connection to uh, the Amida, uh, which is also in benching in the Bir Katamazon, the grace after meals. There is a requirement to have a meal on Purim day. It should be festive together with family and friends because this in- increases the joy and celebration. It should be, of course, observed in the spirit of Torah with words spoken at the meal. Since it's a holiday, you can light candles. We do not make a blessing on lighting of the candles. Women are, and men are similarly obligated to eat the Purim meal, including meat and bread. Proper to learn Torah before the daytime meal, which is alluded to in the Megillah uh, in verse uh, 16 of chapter 8, which says, La Yehudim Haisa Oira Vesimcha, a verse which we say uh, at uh, Havdalah, the conclusion of every Shabbat. The Gemara uh, D- Darshans explains that Ora Zu Torah, that when it says the Jews had light, light, of course, is Torah, which lights our path in life. Another reason is that so the Torah learning will, uh, will uh, protect the person, be a merit for the person. The custom is to eat the, the Purim meal after davening mincha. This is because in the morning people are giving, uh, busy giving out shalach manas. No requirement to have it specifically in the afternoon. You can have it in the morning if you like, whatever works for you. The majority of the meal should take place during the daytime. However, some start the meal uh, sometime before sunset and continue into the night. A lot of uh, reasons uh, why that's uh, a nice custom. It takes it into Shushan Purim and so on. If Purim occurs on Friday, which it doesn't this year, the meal should take place early in the day in order to honor Shabbat. So you don't... Uh, come into Shabbos having just eaten a full meal, but you have an appetite for the Shabbos food. One should eat challah at the Purim meal. There's no requirement to have lechem mishnah. You don't have to have two loaves, but you should uh, wash and eat uh, bread. When eating bread at this meal, you should eat a uh, kezayis, eat a, uh, a proper amount at the beginning, so you'll be able to uh, consider it a full meal. This should be a meat meal. One should eat meat at this meal to fulfill the emptive requirement of eating meat. Preferable to eat red meat, but chicken can be used as well. Vegetarians, uh, let's discuss. One should take care to begin the meat portion of the meal before sunset in order to fulfill the mitzvah of eating meat on Purim, which is a part of the rejoicing. The famous Gemara that uh, people know, probably the one thing people know about Purim, Chayev inish lebesumi de Purpuria, ad la yada ben arar haman lebaruch mordechai. One is obligated to become intoxicated on Purim to the point where he can no longer distinguish between cursing haman and blessing mordechai. Uh, many reasons given for this. Uh, the, both the cursing of haman and the rising of mordechai to power are great blessings. And in fact, the rise of power to Mordechai was even a greater blessing. On Purim, we're instructed to become intoxicated to the point where we're unable to distinguish which is the greater blessing. I'm going to just summarize here so we can, uh, so we can get on with our pre-Shabbos announcements. Uh, we, uh, uh, the, uh, one should uh, drink more than one is accustomed to, uh, and this should be wine because the, uh, the uh, uh, miracles of Purim were very much connected to wine. So many people are uh, into uh, mashke, into uh, liquors and liqueurs and all that. That is part of it, uh, but uh, wine should be a part of this, uh, this uh, process. No mitzvah of chinuch, nothing to uh, involve in training children to drink alcohol in Purim, so don't do that. Uh, one should not probably daven while intoxicated, uh, and um, one should certainly not embarrass or uh, harm another person, cause any harm, uh, anything like that. Heaven forbid, not that anyone would, be, would uh, become uh, so intoxicated as to cause others harm, but we also must be, take uh, caution. Uh, just as we're careful, as they say, with the kashrus, with the uh, suitability of what goes into our mouths food-wise, we should be similarly careful on Purim, no less than any other day, with what comes out of our mouths, that our words do not harm or hurt, even in jest, uh, another person. Okay, so let's uh, keep that in mind. And of course, driving while intoxicated is against provincial and city law, so uh, there's no place for that whatsoever. Uh, So uh, make sure if uh, you are uh, indulging in some uh, Purim liquid festivities uh, that you have an appropriate way to get where you need to go uh, without endangering yourself or others, God forbid, on the roads. 
Have a happy and wonderful Purim. Purim Sameach. It should be uh, truly light and the deliverance and salvation for all the Jewish people and everybody in our orbit. Uh, should be peace for everyone. Let's uh, speak about uh, Shabbat uh, beginning this evening, candlelighting at 6.01. Uh, Mincha, Myra, Mincha, and uh, Kabbalah Shabbat time would be 6.05 this evening if we were together in the show. We're not ready to quite to do that yet, so uh, let's dive in at that time together wherever we are, and we'll be together where, uh, even though we're in different physical locations. Shachris, tomorrow morning, Shabbos morning is uh, 10, a, 10 a.m. We'll begin, and do remember that we are uh, reading uh, Parsha Zachor, the extra portion uh, of uh, remembering Amalek, as is customary. Uh, on the poor on the Shabbos immediately before Purim, and of course the special of Torah that goes with that also. Uh, we will have an in-person Kiddush, as we did last week. It was very successful. Many people stayed. I don't believe, as of press time, that there is a, uh, a sponsored Kiddush to go, so the Kiddush is going to be sponsored by the Hevra, by the KST Hevra, all of those who, of you who have in the past and who continue to and will in the future uh, support the Hevra Fund to allow us to have a hot Kiddush every Shabbos. Uh, that's going to be the sponsors this Shabbos. Motzei Shabbat, the inclusion of Shabbos is 7.03. Tomorrow night, uh, Zoom Havdalah 7.13. And uh, uh, an exciting element to the evening, this is where we lose the hour of sleep. Daylight, savings times be, the daylight saving time begins at 2 a.m. Sunday morning. So you have to turn your clocks ahead, spring forward. It's spring already. You wouldn't know from the weather necessarily, but there you have it. Okay, so uh, uh, there is no minion uh, in Shul on Sunday morning. Uh, so Monday morning will be at 7 o'clock. By that time, everyone will surely have adjusted their clocks and will all be on time for Minyan. Please support your local Minyan. Have a wonderful day, a good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, and Chag Sameach coming up in just a few days.